The thing about defense is that administrators and key decision makers oftentimes want to go for the easiest, most turnkey solution, the path of least resistance. And this is a boon for the offense, because as a hacker, ethical hacker, penetration tester, red teamer, all they have to do is not try to take advantage or dismantle a whole complete secure concept or idea, they just need to break the implementation. That means that misconfigurations, or accidental, forgotten, or just unknown things, gaps and holes in the security posture can open the door for this threat actor or offensive individual to do some more damage. And of course, that adversary will try to masquerade, or blend in, or remain stealthy and hidden in the work that they do, and one of those common techniques that we talk about in cybersecurity is called living off the land, where you can use a lot of the programs, utilities, and tools that are inherent and native to the operating system or the technology present so that they can do what they'd like to do. So in this video I'd like to showcase one other living off the land technique that comes with it a little bit of an interesting conversation or some other food for thought or things that we should at least be cognizant of and maybe look back into for our own security settings. Now of course, hey, this is brought to light by Gregoras Torek. Forgive me, Ogtweet, I know I always get your name wrong, my friend, uh, but I'm just grateful and thankful for you allowing me and letting me. I'd asked for permission. He said, of course, it's all online and free for exactly exactly this purpose, to share and showcase what he has put together here. This is another DLL sideloading technique. It can work as a simple and maybe not so common way of bypassing application allow lists, right? Things where you say, hey, I want only these programs to run. However, if that is configured and maybe misconfigured to only allow executable files like a .exe file and not DLLs, these dynamic link libraries that can still execute code, this could slide right under the radar. And of course, he includes this screenshot. Uh, in the background, you can see, I think, Procmon or Process Monitor from the Sysin Tool Suite, taking a look at some of the features and functionality of the System Reset Platform.exe. Now, this is a native binary. It is installed. It's already on your Windows operating system. I'm rocking my Windows 10 machine as my host, and that file is present, and it's going to do some weird and interesting stuff because it looks like it will just naturally load an image or a DLL from this path and this location on the file system. C colon backslash dollar sign sys reset framework stack rjv platform dot DLL. Now, I don't think naturally that this file exists and if we just put one there, it'll run it. It'll do it. If we can craft and create our own DLL, we as a threat actor putting our hacker hat on play pretend adversary, we can do whatever we want. Now you, as the listening in penetration tester or red teamer, can of course use this for persistence. Hey, maybe having some other backdoor that could escalate privileges or do something else, or stage and fake some part of an aspect of a script for some other initial access or exploit or privilege escalation that you might do by trying to have some indirection and thinking this is a normal, natural, regular, binary installed living on the land, living off of the land to do something else. But enough banter, anyway, I'm sorry for all that rambling. Let's get to it, let's do some show and tell, let's do some live demos, and let's light off some fireworks here. So what I am going to do is make a directory called NIM. Because in this video, I would like to test the waters and kind of get a feel for you and your opinion and your input and your feedback on, hey, some more maybe, I don't know, uh, implant, malware, beacon, development, some offensive security that we might be able to do in NIM or NIMLang. Now I know maybe I'll get some uh, flack for this because look, we gotta be elite, we gotta be super hacked or need Cyber Ninja Warrior, cutting it up in C and C++ and low level languages like Rust. But man, I'm scared of those things. I'm not good at it. So I thought, you know, hey, maybe we can uh, maybe bring the barrier to entry down a little bit and we could play with NIM because it looks like Python. It just feels like Python, but you can still do some really cool lead Cyber Ninja Warrior stuff with it. Anyway, let me know if you would like to see more NIM uh, videos and content on a lot of that mother offensive security stuff. Now the reason I'm going to be writing some code in NIM, we can create a my dll.nim with sublime text or sublime text text editor, whatever editor you might like, is because we need to create a DLL. We need to cause some code to run that is not just a flat regular exe. It has to match this pattern and schema as we saw within sysinternals process monitor, right? The thing is with nim, this is super duper easy because we are again standing on the shoulders of other incredible researchers and great folks that have done some phenomenal work. Gregores Twarek and Marcello or Bite Bleeder, who has put together an incredible GitHub repository called Offensive Nim. 
Now you've probably seen a ton of these. There are there is an offensive rust, there is an offensive C sharp or whatever. There's offensive Golang. There's plenty of these cool things that uh, showcase some syntax snippets and code in weaponizing a language for other offensive security work, like implant development or malware development. And this is phenomenal because it lists so much cool, cool stuff. Uh, there is a little table of contents here, a little bit of an index or other examples that you might be able to go take a look at, like using Win32 API calls, like, hey, digging into some of the natural native NT API, using the common language runtime, building up name pipes, doing uh, stuff with AMSI or AMSI, patching out ETW, so, so much cool stuff that you should absolutely look at if you haven't already. But we are going to start small. We're going to crawl, not run here before we run anyway. We're going to create some Windows DLLs with a DLL main function. Actually, before we start cutting up the code, let's hear a quick word from today's sponsor, PlexTrack. When you're performing a penetration test, you're in the zone. You're hacking away and you're having fun, gathering findings, beating up vulnerabilities, and earning domain admin. But you might be dreading the work that comes after. You have to write a report. But writing a pen test report doesn't have to be dull and boring and long and tedious. In fact, it can be a breeze. You don't even have to worry about your report because PlexTrack can handle it for you. If you aren't familiar, PlexTrack is the premier cybersecurity reporting and collaboration platform that makes penetration testers, red teamers, and cybersecurity teams more efficient, effective, and proactive. PlexTrack removes the pain of reporting and lets you collaborate between both red and blue teams for effective purple teaming and faster remediation. The PlexTrack platform lets you easily aggregate findings, pull in reusable content from write-up databases and content libraries, and track and measure engagement progress in real time. Import assets from CSV files or Nmap or Nessus and so many others of your favorite tools. With over 25 integrations, you can streamline your reporting and collaboration process right into your existing workflow. You can do even faster testing with PlexTrack's runbooks and show the impact to managers and leadership with PlexTrack's analytics and visualizations. Within minutes, you can have your pen test report done and dusted, all with your team's logo and details, and then sent off to the client. Spend more time hacking and less time reporting. Learn how you can boost your team's efficiency by 30% and cut reporting time by up to 65% with PlexTrack. Seriously, check out PlexTrack. I have great colleagues and peers that use PlexTrack every day for reporting. Get started with my link below in the video description and let you and your team get back to hacking. Huge thanks to PlexTrack for sponsoring this video. We're going to create some Windows DLLs with a DLL main function. Because DLLs, the dynamic link libraries, will naturally invoke and run an exported function, which is normally naturally DLL main on Windows and Windows operating systems. Now, NIM does something a little bit odd, but that's okay. It's again, super easy to kind of work through. And again, thanks to all the great people that have already done this work for us. The NIM compiler tries to create its own DLL main function automatically, uh, but it doesn't actually export it. It's not something that you could actually try to call or use through and from that DLL, the dynamic link library. You have to create and export a DLL main yourself by passing tac tac no main to the NIM compiler and then defining that DLL main with the appropriate pragmas, standard call, export C dinlib. Now you need to create your own NIM main that will initialize NIM's garbage collector, and that is apparently extremely important because otherwise your computer will just literally explode, uh, which I have not validated, but I will press the I believe button and trust. Now they're going to end up using the WinNIM library, which is some super cool library and package and module of NIM code that will just naturally work with all the Win32 and like Windows operating systems types and functions and other methods and names and variables and things that would just be super duper helpful and handy for us to have. It's like the windows.h file header in C and C++ for you low level nerds. Um, and this is exactly how we could just build one out. I'm going to go ahead and copy this code. Uh, it's creating a procedure or a function for nim main, giving the dot C decal and import C pragmas, and then building out our own DLL main, taking in the appropriate usual syntax for arguments to go to a DLL main function, like the handle instance, like the reason that this DLL has been called and other reserved keywords, etc. Now, if the reason it's called is because a process has attached to it or that DLL is just getting started and spoken into existence, they do a simple message box, like a Win32 API call. 
Now we can do that super duper easily because of WinNim and they're using a lean rendition of it. Super small, super duper easy. Again, we can just copy and paste that code and I will go bring it into my text editor in Sublime Text where I can save this with Control S. Now this is easy. This is literally all that we need. Uh, if we want to get a little bit clever, I don't know, maybe not a message box, we could do something a little bit more flashy. Hey, flex some super tiny NIM muscles for the moment. Let's import OS proc so we can start new processes within our operating system. And then we could uh, comment out our message box, a little hashtag Octothorpe, of course, very Python-like in NIM syntax. This is a crash course, I'm sorry. Uh, maybe we could get like a full-blown tutorial series on NIM. Maybe that'd be fun. Uh, but anyway, we could use OS proc, this new imported library or module here and let's try to use an exec process and we can pass in like a calc.exe as a calculator, just benign, simple payload. We could get into, I don't know, maybe trying to carve up some uh, implants and beacons and interpreter callbacks. The thing is NIM is uh, very notoriously known for a lot of malware development now, so it's pretty easily signatured, um, but that's okay. It's malware. I intend for it to be detected if we do any malicious stuff. This actually returns, however, a value that must be worked with. If we aren't gonna end up working with the, val the return value, then we should get rid of it. So we should kind of discard that. And that should, fingers crossed, be enough for us. That's all we need to do. Super duper easy. Again, copying and pasting and slapping in some of the other progmas that are necessary there. I think with that, we can go back to our command line and let's try to compile this thing. We would normally use NIM if we had it installed with C to compile for mydll.nim. The thing is when we do this, we're gonna get spat out a mydll.exe. It is an executable file, which is not what we want right now. We want a DLL. So there is some other special syntax that we might be able to use to compile. And of course, this repository already gives us the sweet sauce, the secret specify, the syntax, semantic sugar that we need here. Nim compile, tag D with the mingw application, or excuse me, compiler, uh, app lib to define it as a library. No main, so we don't have DLL main automatically created for us by main. CPU architecture and then mynim.dll, which I believe should actually be the source code file that we want to use here. So again, we can just copy that syntax, bring it back to my command line, I'll paste this in, and I'll change this to a mydll.nim as the file extension here, not our compiled binary. Let this thing go, Nim will compile it, nice and easy. And now we have a DLL, which is perfect. Because obviously trying to run my DLL.exe would not work, it would not do anything. Because it's it's written, the code is put together to act as a DLL. Let's go ahead and remove my DLL.exe, because it's not a DLL. But let's run our my DLL.dll. I guess we're just gonna fire up PE Explorer, which I guess is a I don't know, function that I have set up on my machine to naturally open DLLs. The thing is it didn't pop up in the calculator. It didn't run the code that we wanted because we didn't call our DLL main as an exported function out of our dynamic link library. Does that make any sense? What we can do is use run DLL, run DLL32, which does some odd stuff for me when I'm in uh, PowerShell. So I'm gonna actually drop down into CMD or CMD.exe, old school command prompt. And then I can probably pretty safely run 32 DLL.exe my dll.dll. Now we will need to give it the name of the function that we might want to run, like the export, and that syntax is with a comma. So let's use DLL main following that. And fingers crossed, we get a calculator. We did it, we built our stupid simple proof of concept payload. Now, let's go take a look at what we could use with Grigora's Torex, little living off the land binary here. This is cool, this is where I want your imagination to run wild because we can do whatever we want in this code, but right now we're doing the small stuff, but we can stage it to not just run, oh, calc.exe or my malware.dll, we can hide it and mask it within the system reset platform. Right? So the syntax that they used was that they make a directory with MD, one of the aliases for that, and that was in C colon backslash dollar sign sys reset framework stack. Framework stack, there we go. And then we'll want to copy our DLL, my DLL, which should be copy in the syntax, to that location under that, what is it? RJV platform.dll? Yeah, RJV platform.dll 
copied, there we go. And now we'll call from System32, the natural install path for Windows, System Reset Platform, System Reset Platform.exe. Now we can trust and press the I believe button. We don't need to fire up Procmon unless you really wanted to see this thing in action. It will end up loading and kicking off our DLL. System Reset Platform.exe. Hit enter. And there's our calculator. Of course, simple, benign payload, but I want you as our red teamer, hacker, ethical, I don't know, programmer, whatever, development, malware, engineer, that could be an opportunity for you to craft something else a little bit stealthy. And remember here, the benefit is that this is a dynamic link library. It is a DLL, it is not a .exe. You're doing some indirection with DLL side loading, which again, has that interesting conversation of, okay, if you're up against application allow listing or deny listing, where you're not allowed to to run things that aren't native or inherent EXEs, like local binary files, well, maybe they've forgot something or there's a little bit of a gap where those DLLs are allowed to run. And this is exactly the conversation that was had on Twitter. Uh, an individual said, look, I did some basic testing with like AppLocker or WDAC, Windows Defender Application Control, uh, on trying to block DLLs. But to be honest, it's tough. Like it's really annoying. Like you need a lot of this functionality for of course Windows applications and programs. And there are like unsigned DLLs just floating around out there, even if they go with signed applications and binaries and software. And Greg Orris says, exactly. It's exactly why DLO allow listing is often called phase two, and it's never actually implemented. Now, of course, hey, uh, take that with a grain of salt. Maybe your organization is doing it right. You got security locked down and you've completed all of that great allow listing and your zero trust topology, etc. Thumbs up. <laughs> they chat about this a little bit more. You know, I think the only way to do it is like big data that Microsoft might have with a lot of the trusted installers in WDAC. Even then, it's not easy. There's a whole lot of administrative burden. It digs into user experience and you've got again that balancing scale of convenience versus security, privacy versus uh, just being able to get your job done, right? Really interesting stuff here. If you would be willing to uh, dig into it, I uh, can include that link in the description. And I hope this is kind of a neat, cool trick for you again, Kudos, shout out, credit where credit is due. Uh, Og Tweet is always putting out incredible stuff. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was a little bit of a cutesy, fun little showcase. Maybe digging into a little bit of NIM or at least uh, testing the water, dipping our toes in the pool to see, do you guys want to see more NIM? Like, man, should that be like its own thing? Maybe some more malware development implant stuff that I would love to get into for offensive security research. Um, let me know, let me know. Give me that feedback in the comments and please, please, please do all those YouTube algorithm things, like, comment, subscribe. If you liked this video, and are willing to support the channel and great stuff we do. There's Patreon, PayPal links in the description. And please, pretty please, check out our sponsor. They're doing some incredible stuff in the penetration testing and red teaming and purple teaming space just as well. We're all in this thing together. We're standing on the shoulders of giants. And you know what? It takes everyone playing in concert, uh, working as a team to make security better. Thanks, everyone. See you in the next video.